not a quick bit, Jordan. This is insane. We It's Saturday and the SPL is back and we've got a great slate of games for you here today. I guess SPL was back yesterday, but it's Saturday and SPL Saturdays are back after a quick day yesterday. My goodness, we had two O's and they were speedy. But we've got three best of threes for you here today and we'll have three more best of threes for you tomorrow. The Oni Warriors 2-0, the Gilded Gladiators, one of the fastest sets we've seen this year. The Highland Ravens just before that did the same to the Sticks Ferryman. Uh, Oni Warriors back in action against the Jade Dragons. Guild of Gladiators, they'll try to right the ship later on today against the Leviathans. Now, one side of the standings matters heavily. Order division up in the air. Highland Ravens in control just by that one extra win. The Camelot Kings hoping to chase that. They'll have a game uh, in the middle of our day here today. And the Highland Ravens and the Kings play one another tomorrow. So the order division could just come down to that final day. Whereas the chaos side, much more simple. Oni Warriors far and away ahead. Oni Warriors at this point fighting for the all-time SPL win streak myth. Um, was it 12? Yeah, they're on nine in here in the SPL. Three during the kickoff tournament. 13 would break that win streak. Uh, and let's talk about this Oni Warriors team because, goodness, this team is, is on a historic tear right now and, and looking like a team that's going to be very difficult to beat anytime soon. And, and, and it's the nature of which w w in that they find their wins, right? It's not, okay, they're long sets, they're back and forth, they can go any way, you know, <laughs> the teams are figuring things out, they've had to adjust their play style. Everything I just said was a falsehood. The sets are fast, the games are fast, they're convincing. When the Oni Warriors win... The enemy team walks home and realizes, wow, that, that was the better team. And it yep. was just incredibly clear. Play on field, mechanics, all of it. Oni Warriors all the way. They play through pressure through every one of their lanes because every one of their laners simply wins out. And Panatom is looking like the best jungler in the league right now. How do you beat the Oni Warriors? Yeah. Nobody's figured it out. I'm not sure. Because it looks like when Panatom's playing this way um, – you try to throw some bands toward Panatom. Pagon's got a, a deep god pool. Awesome Jake is playing some of the best might we've ever seen him play. It really feels like he's found a team that synergizes well with his play style, his mindset, and, and what he wants to do. And that opens up net uh, and SOT as well. And Coach Oxie, I mean, look, he's got he's got the meta figured out, it seems. This Oni Warriors team, again, they're on a historic run. Unfortunately for their opponents, the Jade Dragons, it's been an opposite story. The Jade Dragons have just not been on it yet this year to what we expected they would be. Remember early on in Season 10, we're thinking, okay, maybe this team has kind of figured some stuff out. Myth, they, they lose um, they lose to the Gilded Gladiators 2-0 in one of the last sets that we saw them play. This is a team that has too much talent, maybe in their own mind, to be playing this type of smite. And so there's some, some growth to do for this roster. Yeah, the Jade Dragons are, are in a really awkward position where when you look at this team, you, you have high expectations. There's a three-man core of the Oni Warriors of last year, Dardes, Vogt, and Nika. Now with Lazra and PBM joining up. Lazra from the Olympus Bolts, PBM from the Jade Dragons now returning with his brand. But it, it has been very strange pacing from the Jade Dragons and even stranger compositions, I think. The Dragons are almost unwilling to, to play what everybody else is playing. Uh, Mike, in particular, has been very likely to go towards mages in the support role, which is within the realm of standard. We've seen a, a lot of teams really lean into the Aphrodite and the Hell supports, but it just simply has not worked out for Mike. Uh, it seems like he is unwilling to play Guardians and Warriors, which has been his bread and butter in the past, or even Assassins, uh, in an aggressive support meta. I, I really thought Mike would be dominant here this year, has not quite been able to match output, especially when you care, compare him to Awesome Jake across the field who has just had a phenomenal showing this year. Uh, I, I expect the Jade Dragons, and, and I only expect this because it's, it's what the they've shown me so far this year, is that they're going to come out and play the exact style of composition that they've played every week up until this point, uh, and I suppose just hope that it works out. 
Look, the uh, the Jay Dragons, Miff, they are on a five set loss streak. The Jay Dragons are on a five set loss streak. They beat the Highland Ravens two to one prior to that, and the Gilded Gladiators two zero prior to that. So the, <laughs> they strung off two wins. So they lost they lost their opening set of the phase to the Kings two zero. No one's no one's ringing the alarm bells. One two one against the Gladiators, one against the Ravens, that have now lost five in a row. Uh, with the last two being against the Hounds and the Gladiators. Uh, the, the Dragons have been in a bit of a free fall, and when it's time to right the ship and get things figured out, you got to lean on one of your vocal veteran players, and that's PBM, who maybe has some thoughts going into this matchup. This week, as well as just the last couple of weeks in general, definitely pretty awful. I feel like we've just been just making a lot of like really horrible plays and also just a lot of... Um, miscoms. I think communication's been pretty poor compared to the start of the year. I don't feel like I've looked at our draft and felt like we've been outdrafted or anything like that. I just kind of think we're playing poorly, which just kind of happens at some points throughout the year, whether people get like burnt out or just like their picks or just like uh, synergy not really clicking. It just kind of happens at any point throughout the year. Rather it happen earlier than later for sure, but yeah, we're just not playing well right now. The Warriors have definitely played really well. I feel like they're very good at Whenever they get a lead, I think they're very good at pushing it. And so I think that'll be the biggest test for us against them. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not really, like, I don't really care about their win streak at all. I'm more so just, like, the way the split is, if you're not first, it's basically just all about going into the seeding tournament. So as long as we feel like we take lessons week to week and keep improving, I'm fine with that and just try to focus on Masters. Seems like the right mindset to have for this Jade Dragons team, where they've realized that first place, I mean, for, for a couple weeks now, it's been out of reach. Unattainable. Right? Um, and, and Can't so do it. It's about improving your seating, and that is still there to fight for in the Chaos Division. Let's delay our match no further. Picks and bans for game one between the Jade Dragons and the Oni Warriors kicking off as we speak. I think another overarching theme here, Miff, is the, the difference between play styles. Think about the Oni Warriors and how fast they play Smite. Think about how long a lot of these J Dragons matches Very seem long. to go. One of the highest average game time teams in the league. And so those are going to be two clashing ideologies here in, uh, in one of the final sets of the phase for both these teams. But the length of the J Dragon sets generally happen because the Dragons are able to win out in the early. Uh, and they usually find themselves in a position where it's, okay, we're now sieging, fire giant on five, can we end the game? The answer more often than not so far this year has been no can't end the game, but a lot of comeback wins up against the Jade Dragons, so uh, I think perhaps uniquely suited to deal with the Oni Warriors throughout the early and that the Dragons ha have won the majority of their matchups there, but the Oni Warriors play a different speed. They, they, they're they simply faster than everybody else, they, and they've simply won out every single one of their lanes. Uh, if the Jade Dragons are going to rely on that ability to make it to late game as they have up until this point, I wonder if, if it will serve them well up against the Oni Warriors who are looking untouchable right now. Question is, where do you put your emphasis if you're the J Dragons? Right now, some emphasis towards just about every lane. Horus, Vimana, Hebo, all gone. Hebo could go to Pagan, could go to Panatom. So a nice double ban there from the J Dragons. That'll leave the Guan Yu open for SOT. Uh, a, a standard, one of the most prioritized soul lane picks we've got in the current meta. However, it's still a pick that opens the door to some great mechanical play and... and Sot absolutely known for that. So a strong option, but the J Dragons myth still have some good frontline options still available. Hercules ten, or has tended to be a, a really popular answer. I feel like we've seen some mindset changes in, uh, in Soul Lane here recently as well. A, a sprinkling of variety um, over in that role. And so I don't think Nika will be hard pressed to find a pick here. Could be Herc Rom, could be Herc Hachiman. Might need to be Nox if you don't want Jake taking that pick, and I don't want to play against Jake's Nox. So the, the Jade point. Dragons need to consider a few things. We want to play our own game. What is our own but game? But do you want Mike on Nox is the question. I, I think if the choice is Mike on Afro, Hell, or Nox, I will take Nox every single day of the week. It's just more of an initiator, more of a standard, uh, and, and I think plays into the strengths that Mike has got for himself. Instead, it will be Herc ADC, not going to be... The, uh, the prioritized ROM that we've seen so far. Instead, it will be the Hachiman who has received some buffs 
in the most recent patch, for those of you who haven't been keeping up, uh, now has a little bit more attack speed thanks to his passives, as well as additional damage on that first ability. The ability damage as well as the scaling has gone up on his enhanced range auto attacks. Uh, essentially adds up to making Hachiman one of the most just vicious boxers in lane. Very good at taking those early 1v1 or 2v2 matchups in the duo. So I like this top two for the Jade Dragons. But I'm concerned now uh, what the retaliation is going to be from the Oni Warriors. I I'd be surprised if Nox isn't one of these two. Yeah, I think Jake needs to grab his pick here if there's something that immediately stands out to him. Oh, wow. CERN plus Afro is the hover right now for the Oni Warriors, and that certainly would be a very strong duo lane. Netrioid has been playing some wonderful smite alongside awesome Jake so far this phase. A couple Hachiman games yesterday against the Gilded Gladiators, and then a CERN game in game three against the kings where he went two one and seven so aphrodite ends up being the pick for awesome jake and myth it feels like one of those picks that that's elevated a bit when it's jake who's playing it he has played this pick so well this year and has really showed us why there was early priority into the aphrodite not everyone has figured it out at this level seemingly but jake certainly has yeah, it feels like Aphrodite, of all the supports in the game right now, is so good at winning harder. Aphrodite is seldom the reason you start to establish a lead, but she can solidify it very easily. If your jungler is ahead and he's got a pocket Aphrodite, he's going to stay ahead and he's going to pull even further ahead. If your ADC is willing to take these boxing matches, every bit of damage that's returned to him won't stick thanks to this Aphrodite. If you think you've got an opportunity to gank lane post level 5, Undying loves a Beads Aegis hard baked into the kit on a shorter cooldown than either Beads or Aegis. So when you're adding all of that up, especially some of the changes to, to Aphrodite here in year 10, uh, giving a little bit more power to, the, to whoever you're linked to whenever you find that stun, just makes her so, so good at solidifying that lead. And with the Oni Warriors winning out in every single lane, in every single game, those leads happen often. Yep. Myth, the uh, the highest KDA for Awesome Jake is Nox. Two games played, 16.5 KDA. What's that win rate? 100% win That's rate. That's right. Um, his hell win rate, also 100%, 2.7 KDA. That's across five games. Uh, Gore and I talked about this on the desk yesterday. Another five games on Aphrodite, an 80% win rate. So just the one loss out of 12 games played on Mage, uh, Mage supports. Certainly a good trend for the Oni Warriors and their duo lane. Jay Dragon's support answer is Sylvanas. Surely it's Susano here, right? There are pull options abound, Myth, for the Jade Dragons, as well as the long range lockdown from Agni. Is it a pick based composition formulating in your mind here for the Jade Dragons? I mean, the Jade Dragons are, are, are not weak in team fight. I feel like Agni. Although capable of playing that pick style, very good at taking fights around fire, around gold fury, throwing out rain fire, looking for that stun, and setting up for follow-up CC. And the follow-up CC is very good. Sylvanas can pull off of an Agni Bomb stun. Hercules can do the exact same thing. So displacement up against the Oni Warriors, I think, going to be where the primary struggle is, assuming that the Jade Dragons are allowed to group up and play off of each other. As for whether or not it's a pick-based composition for now, I think almost completely contingent on what the jungler selection is. As it stands, I'd argue this one a little bit more team fight oriented. Okay. Daji. Absolutely a good look for Panatom, yeah, who again, I mean, a, a, alongside the rest of the Oni Warriors, has been playing world best type smite here recently. Oni Warriors have only lost one of their last six games, one of them against the Camelot Kings. Daji plus Merlin. Seems pretty standard, and that's a conversation that we have had now about the Sony Warriors team where early in the kickoff tournament we're talking about these guys just running it down, which they still do, don't get me wrong. But they'll play a well-rounded composition and outsmite you a good bit of the time, and it seems like Adagi Merlin just opens up that door. Saw some Pele yesterday that was from Panatom and a Morrigan transformation from Pagon, and it looked really good. This is just Lasbra who... Needs to have a big set today, Myth. Talk about matching the pace of Panatom. Lasbro is maybe the one who can do it. And he'll go to the Bakasura in order to attempt to do so. I mean, Bakasura is really good right now, of course. We've seen him consistently so far this year. But as for his direct matchup into the Oni Warriors, I feel like Bakasura is really going to struggle up against Guan Yu. That cavalry charge is a response to regurgitate 
always going to be a great option. Daji has a phenomenal matchup in Abakasura as well. If you're looking at that late game 1v1 matchup, you go into Regurgitate to start the fight so that Daji can't trick her spirit or, or get any of her mobility off. She goes up into the Palau, waits out the half second CC immunity that you've got, uh, and you're either forced to immediately disengage and pray you can get out of range, or you're pulled back in and Daji's got much higher burst potential. Uh, I'm concerned for this Bakasura. And his ability to stick in the team fight, I think, is, is going to be very difficult. If Bakasura isn't allowed to land 10 auto attacks in a skirmish, he hasn't found his value. And up against this composition from the Oni Warriors, I think he's really going to struggle to find those opportunities. I mean, whoever Aphrodite's linked to is immune to Bakasura. Merlin's got great persistent damage on field. Bakasura does not fare well in a, into engagements like that. It could be, and this has been a strategy for Lazbra consistently this year, that he plays completely as a solo agent. Doesn't join his team in the five-on-five -five engagement. Instead, hovers around the sidelines, waits to find isolated individuals, and tries to pick them off on his own. And then you have to trust the rest of the Jade Dragons, that four-man core, to be able to hold off in a 5v4, essentially, yep. for upwards of 20 to 30 seconds while Lazra is lurking in the jungle. Myth Silvana so far this year, one and two across three games, 33% win rate. KDA of 0.7. It's not bad. It's pretty one, good for support. One, ten, and twelve is what that uh, what that shakes out to across three or so games. All right. Well, maybe not. That sounds way better than it is. Right. That's <laughs> if there were maybe a one, one less kill. One, ten, and twelve. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah, it's not great. Not ideal. Uh, is this the game where that changes though? Do you see Sylvanas having an easy time into what the the Oni Warriors have built? I'm not a Sylvanas fan, man. I don't see Sylvanas having an no. easy time anywhere. <laughs> Sylvanas is a guardian, so I'm much happier <laughs> about that uh, compared to some of Mike's picks recently. But, yeah, uh, no, I don't see it having an easy time here. The class of God, the saving grace yes. for us, for Sylvanas. He's getting some defense stats. It's good. See if the class of God is enough to give the J Dragons and their support. Uh, some momentum here in game one against the undefeated Oni Warriors. Yeah, thanks so much, Dave and Mifflin. One I'm excited for as the Warriors continue on potentially an undefeated streak. And Trelly, Mike's playing Sylvan, something we haven't gotten to see in a long time. And he's got to be a little cautious based on what I've seen today. It's a little dangerous to be an old man out there. <laughs> yep. Yep, it is. That uh, is very mobile. Uh, it's 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 hard to it's hard to position on so long. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean you gotta watch the. I broke Dave, dude. Uh, it's worth you, it. You gotta watch those. Uh, <laughs> you gotta watch those games. I've been sitting here chuckling for like three minutes straight, waiting for like you told me not to warn you. I was gonna make the joke earlier. Hey, man, I'm excited for this one though. You should. Warriors, be. I think are on a fantastic streak right now. And you know what? We don't have to think about it, Charlie. They are. They are. They that tied the true. Kings, right? 12 in a row. And now they could push that even further, make history right here. Dragons, honestly, if they get a win here, that, that, that makes maybe a little bit of history for Season 10. Those predictions. I don't think I've ever seen a Dragons number that low. Yep, that is, and unfortunately for the Dragons, that is a probably a fair <laughs> estimate. Given the, the Oni Warriors track record, and the Jade Dragons, how they've been playing. But I do think, you know, the man on your screen before, Mike does have the, the power to change that. I think, uh, you know, Sylvanas can play at such an aggressive level if he's able to. He's, he's not one of those immobile mages. It's all about the pulls, right? It's all about the pulls. You're, you're darn right in this case. Just trying to get active as early as possible. Well, he's already, I mean, aggressive. Look, if you want to jump on someone, it's the Aphrodite, Jake. He's getting a little low. Does walk away from this one. The healing, not a lot early on, but but enough at this point. Some good poke from Netroid in turn of retaliation. And that's going to be the dangerous zone for Jake, especially if a pull like that happens. Good damage from the Hachi. But again, able to walk away from this Netroid. Free firing for a little bit now, taking a little bit too He's much. Mike in. needs some help. He goes in. Oh he gets the autos. Goodness. And he gets first blood as well. Forces Mike to back off. What a play from Netroid. You got to watch out for those auto attack hits, especially with the dash. It's just so much damage. And Netroid said, yeah, awesome Jake's weak. Sure. But I'm full HP. I've got birds. I've got plenty of damage. And that's going to be an easy first blood there. And unfortunately for Vote, he was close. But they don't have the anti-heal. They don't have any sort of damage to trade back. And... 
Sarn just wins that 1v1. He just has way more early damage. I'm going to be honest. With the way those fights were going, I was not expecting first blood to happen that quickly. I was thinking it was going to be a lot of poke on supports, or someone was going to die. It was going to be the Afro. Well played by Net. War Flag picked up here by Mike. So not only is it a different god that we're seeing, a different start that we're seeing, you know, compared to everything else. Like Tainted Steel with all the healing makes sense for the solo laners. Jake's just going the standard build. Why War Flag here? I'm a big fan of the War Flag. Uh, all I right. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's a little slept on. The reason you're picking it up is if you have some of those auto attackers on your team, that extra movement to that extra attack speed really helps out. And in this case, you, you've got Lazbra on the Bakasura. Of course, you've got Vodin Lane, who's already going to be getting some attack speed with the new buffs to Hachiman. Yeah. The issue, of course, is you're, you're uh, losing a bit of value later on nice because job. of, you know, heroism. You know, those give immense value. The auras are very strong right now. So, unfortunately, the buff to your team is not as impactful as, you know, the protections or the shielding that can come later on. Yeah. But I'm thinking Mike was... Really hoping for A, a first blood, which would have could have snowballed that game in their favor, which is why they got the horrific emblem and just walked at Awesome Jake early on. But because you fall down, you'll lose some of that pressure. You're going to be wishing that you had that heroism or the Sentinel's Embrace later on, those extra aura protections that are so yeah. strong right now. Those prots, like you said, I mean, that can be absolutely insane, like, <laughs> for just keeping you, keeping your team alive uh, if you share them. Always a beautiful... I guess moment for a support. It's so weird when you feel like your impact is I made you not die. Yeah. And so that's that was my, <laughs> my goal uh, and able to make it. Another one that got buffed coming into this week, something that I was wondering if we were going to see. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, Let's see if I let's can say see, it you properly. Got this. The Cannoneer's Curus. There you go. That's how I would pronounce it. I'm waiting for the question. I know it's Oh, going. yeah. <laughs> it locked in for Jake. How do you like this? I feel like we, we've talked about it a little bit, but what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I'm also a big fan. Lane pressure is so important. Just being able to absolutely destroy the big minion every time it comes through, it saves a lot of time on clear, and you can focus on fighting. So I think a good buff. And <laughs> so for the Warriors. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it fits the Warriors playstyle so well, and, and it's one of those items that if you're going to be getting it on a support, you're going to try to get that lane pressure. Of course, Mike is actually going to match it and finish yeah. it around the same time. Because if you, I think if one person gets it, the other support sort of is forced into it or you're just losing that lane pressure. But also it's just fun. You know, if you've ever seen a support try and kill the big minion, it takes them a solid, like, a minute just to, to auto it down. <laughs> but no longer. When you've got Cannoneers, Curus. That, I, that's never how I said it, but I think yours is better. Uh, it, it's just, you know, and it's the kill, and it's just nice. I could feel you putting some emphasis on a word that maybe we shouldn't on broadcast. Yep. And, yeah. I, and yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. once you said it out loud, I was like, that's definitely the way I'm going to go from <laughs> now on. <laughs> no, you mentioning it, the, the, the support pain of clearing, like, a wave. Yep. I have, in games, especially when, when my brain kind of shuts off after, like, your third, fourth, fifth in a row, uh, I will walk up to, like, the green buff and just fight for yep. five minutes be half health by the green buff, <laughs> lose all my mana in the, the cycle, and then just back again. Like, I yep. walked straight from base there. So maybe something that PBM and Jake are going to hopefully offset here. I doubt they're going to be soloing any buffs, though. And it slowed down. I thought we were going to see a lot more over here. I'm waiting for that, that one drop. The one thing Sylvanas brings that, that I'm personally a huge fan of is that instant fight. And it's going to be in mid instead. Lasbra jumps under the tower. Pagon no. flew. And Pagon turns what? it around. He makes you look like a clown. Shuts him down and keeps himself alive. That is two kills for the Warriors. And both times it felt like the Dragons had the upper hand. Okay, well, first of all, you're a poet and you didn't know it. But that Aegis pickup goes wild there for Pagon. Did I, I saw the Aegis early on. And I was like, wow, he might need the beads for the cripple goo for that amount of, you know, he wants to flicker away. Doesn't matter. The Aegis buys him just enough time and Lazbra, he wasn't able to eat a minion, goes down and survives underneath the tower at essentially one HP. And there was just no help. Dardes could not provide the extra damage. That's a huge kill. And I guess a, a dropped moment there from the Jade Dragons. Could have been a guaranteed kill. Just one more auto attack comes through at the very least. Dardis was able to get a little bit of farm. He's going to be a little bit more ahead XP-wise, but Pagon getting that gold, that's a huge shutdown. That really hurts because Lasper wanted to get off to a good start. Of course, Pantom goes Transcendence. That tells me this Daji not looking for ganks early on, just yeah. wants to farm. And Lasper's like, oh, that's good. I'm going to look for some ganks. I'm going to try and get active. And dropping that 
really puts uh, Panatom in a great position as well. And I want to watch it back because when we click in and you know we jump over there, I think we have the replay. Pagon, he gets jumped on. I mean, he yep. he's he's already just one hit away here. Munch. But it's that choice that Aegis instead of oh. a beads <laughs> that really helps out. The tower also helps out a good chunk. I mean, Charlie. It's it's a small relic choice, mm -hmm. but that Aegis goes huge. Yep, and I think, look at all the CC on the side of the Jade Dragons, by the way. It, it's not like you don't have to worry about Nika's pull. It's not that you don't have to worry about the stuns from Dardes or the Cripple Goo, as mentioned, from Lazbra. Pagan has said, hey, they've got a lot of burst, and this is going to go a long way here. So he decides to start it, and it ends out paying huge. Because you, you get to live that gank, you put Lazbra behind, and I it, it, it doesn't you can't see it on paper, but Panatom gets a big boost off of number one, Lazbra dying there, but how much farm Panatom was able to take away in the meantime, especially when you start Transcendence. He just wants to farm for the time being, no and the Oni way. Warriors, they're gonna farm a Gold Fury. There's no one even here, this is free. Look, this is the pace of game they've been setting. They've asked who can meet us here, and they've seen a couple of teams try, right? The Ravens have picked up their pace of game as well. The Dragons, this phase, longest average game time, and flat out just some of the longest games we've had, period. The Oni Warriors? And the Warriors are going to vibe check them here. Yeah. At least it feels like with that Gold Fury. And the Oni Warriors, the complete opposite. The <laughs> shortest games. I mean, we saw, what, a 14-minute Fire Giant as Vogue gets his ultimate forced. And I'm thinking we're on we're on pace to see a, a situation like that. You know? and, <laughs> and, and to be fair, the Gold Lead does not implicate that at all. You know, it's, it's not massive. A thousand gold, you wouldn't be like, oh, 14-minute FG. But the Warriors don't need that much space, as shown just then. They need a little bit of vision, and they're down to go for these 50-50s. And unfortunately for seven other teams in the league, that usually ends up Warriors. Seven minute in for a Gold Fury is, is already... Honestly, just in this day and age, that's an absolutely insane pace. Mm -hmm. And so now... I mean, it's really weird. They've, they've stripped away the neutral objective to talk about. Pyromancer's not going to be here for another couple of minutes. And so maybe it's going to be Aggression Dragons... And needing to look for, for a fight that goes their way, right? The the dual lane, first blood, falls a apart. Pole? Now maybe they can get something. Pagon gets the red buff. He's looking for some burn oh. damage. Aegis goes huge again. Knock up great from Mike. This time, though, they've got the secure. But can they get away? That's a bigger deal. Lazbra pulled in. Easy kill for Panatom and the chase down onto PBM. Has the rotation from Solo or Troll. Will they get the CC in time? Panatom. Uses the dash to close gap. A little bit of a stop measure from Jake to make sure Mike goes a different path. Gets some more DPS in. But a great stun from Dardes. Better stun from Jake. That's going to finally let them put that tree in the ground. And get themselves a fourth kill. Yep. Unfortunately for Pagon, there's a few fancy plays you can make underneath tower. But when three decide to dive you at red buff, and again, you don't have those beads. They were like, hey, we need this kill. Like We are, we are forcing this. It's not going to be worth it. But we just need to get something going. Lasbra. Gets his first kill of the game. Unfortunate for Dardes, was not able to help try and zone out Panatom. He's like, hey, Mike, maybe I can step up. Maybe I can provide some CC. But Jake walked up and said, nope, I'm going to make sure this kills go through. And a clutch rotation from SOT on the Guan Yu just to make sure that that kill goes through. So the J-Dragons are on the board. But the question now becomes, can you do that again? Can you look to try and gank Pagod before he gets access to beads? Now that awesome Jake is here, he's not going to need him. He's got Undying Love. And that kiss should be just enough to make sure he stays alive. Ooh. Jake gets pulled in, but I don't think they've got enough damage to even look at this Aphrodite. So much gold. I mean, you got the full sickle working out, uh, assuming a breastplate of regrowth. This Aphrodite is going to be a menace. A little nerve wracking. Ten minutes in, I saw a couple of warriors on the right hand side in the fire giant pit. And, and it gives me pause, right? Just because of what we've seen from this team. No, they're playing it smart instead. It's a stun onto Dardes. Panatom and Jake caught out by Nika. It's a 4v3. Panatom's taking a lot of damage here. You had mentioned it. That Undying Love used to get Panatom out, but it's not enough. And that's a kill for the solo lane. Hercules now chasing him down, locking him up. And Jake's not going to be able to get away from this one. Good couple of kills. Double kill for Nika. And that should lead into the Pyromancer. Yep, 4v3. Pagon was not able to step up. Remember, his Aegis was pulled earlier. Great play by the J Dragons. They knew exactly when they were able to win that fight. And now Pyromancer goes down for free. And they will be able to grab a Runic Bomb. This time Lazbra able to pick it up. And, and this is sort of the way you got to stop the Oni Warriors. You have to find a pick and then use that to your advantage. Because Pagon had to go back to base, because he didn't have relics, he's gone. You, you take a 4v3 over near FG. 
And that's going to help you out to get the objective after. But now the Oni Warriors have that timer on the Oni Fury. That's going to spawn in here shortly. And they're not just going to let that go unnoticed. They will be there on respawn. And Netro and Pantom have already started up the DPS. Dardes wow. is nearby, but he's not even a step up. It's another free one for the Oni Warriors. And honestly, I don't blame the Dragons. The shred the Warriors just had on uh, Fury at 11 minutes, I mean, that was insane. Exe goes a long way. And you had mentioned... Uh, not just the Xe, but but now what that's going to provide, right? The Gold Fury earlier gives them a nice little boost, but this Fury, the Oni Fury, going to give them some of the minion wave strength that they maybe need to put some pressure on the map. Overall, 1,800 gold, 1,500 experience in favor of the Warriors, 12 minutes in. The last couple of kills, and specifically getting that Pyromancer as well for the Dragons, makes a huge difference. I mean, that dip is massive. Otherwise, we're talking about a 3,000 gold lead right now. Yep, and in this case, I think the Jade Dragons are going to have to play a little passively for the time being. Tier 1 tower being looked at. It doesn't seem like Vogue can step up to body block those autos, so that will go down in favor of the Warriors. My question now becomes, when does Sot rotate out? Uh, he, he's very strong right now with the Transcendence finish and plenty of physical defense. Really, only Dardes is chunking this Guan Yu. And Nika has been pretty much left alone in lane, right? He gets that beautiful rotation, fights a Pyromancer, able to grab two kills, but hasn't really went over to any objective fights because there haven't been any, right? The Gold Furies have been given up for free. The Jade Dragons have not really been there to try and defend. And I think that this Hercules could be a, pr a pretty massive boon in, in strength during these fights. There's a lot of less than tanky characters, Panaton, yeah. Pagon, and Netroid, that really wouldn't like the mean end of a driving strike at this point in the game. Well, you had talked about Jake... And at this point, the level lead, the gold lead, uh, and you were right on the money. Breastplate of regrowth built in. Got the shell as well since he just hit 12. And that's something, you know, we haven't touched on it as much lately. It feels like the supports have been able to kind of keep at least level around 12. Having that two-level lead, not just the gold and the item difference, but that second relic actually going to help out immensely, especially for someone like Aphrodite. Yep, usually it's... Hey, they pop, they pop terrific, I'm going to pop my horrific as well, and then we're just going to sit here every very slow, but add a shell into the mix. And that really can change the dynamic of a team fight, especially with a character like Bakasura, who needs those auto attacks. Doesn't have much attack speed built in just yet. He's working towards it. Lasbro wants to get those Butcher Blades and those Kin Size procs as much as possible, but the horrific emblem really does slow it down, and the shell starts to add up as well. So the Oni Warrior is still in a commanding position on the map. It looks like just farming for the time being. We mentioned the possibility of early fire giants whenever the Oni Warriors are here, but they don't have too much damage and they don't have enough of a lead. I still think Nika is a big threat. You know, that boulder can be disastrous and it does take a long time to chew through a fire giant, especially when Netroid's got two and a half items to his name, working on a kin size there. No crit. You're not gonna be you're not gonna be doing a fire giant in, in a couple in a couple seconds this time around. It's just too early. Warriors breakneck pace in terms of objectives. They've kind of pumped the brakes on some of the kills. Granted, two of the kills that happened, uh, they weren't even trying for. They just kind of came to them. With the Pyromancer spa spawning in soon, definitely feels like a big objective for the Dragons to try and step up to. Ward coverage right now from the Warriors, though, relatively deep on the right-hand side. Keeping things a little more interesting. Looking towards the builds, you had mentioned the, the Executioner early on for Netroid. It's directly into the Chin Size for Vote. And then Chin Size for Netroid. So he's got the, the full Tier 3 up over the Tier 2. Not only that, Vote uh, going a completely different route. Do you think this is going to... Well, I guess we can see it. It does affect how much damage and how much shred they have on these objectives, Jelly. Yep, I think the... The switch up comes from the, the change up to Hachi's passive. You're getting extra attack speed. You've got the banner, so you don't really need the XC, the dominance. Yeah. It's just going to give you more power, and then you already get the inherent attack speed built into your kit, so you don't really need the XC. At least that's the, the mindset here. Netroid's been rotating to these objectives and helping his team out, but he's been falling a bit behind XP-wise because of it. Boat doesn't have to leave. He's about a level and a half up just by nature of staying over on that left side of the map, but Lazra... He's deep in the enemy jungle, has to weasel his way out towards blue buff. But the Pyromancer dropped, Gold Fury already spawned back in. Yeah. The only warriors are uncontested so far, just stepping up to these objectives. Besides that one fight that the J Dragons did a fantastic job of starting, since then haven't decided to get aggressive. And remember, Mike was able to hit 12, goes back, it's a full drowned Ankh off back, so he's not going to be quite as tanky as Awesome Jake, but can stop some of that healing. And because of that, 
gonna hurt a lot of what the Oni Warriors are trying to do. Nika, maybe caught out here. Has to be careful. Metroid's damage is actually perfect for a Hercules here. And I think Nika learns that, keeps himself healthy along with the help of PBM. Dardaz is over on the left hand side of the map as well. So, four dragons. Technically, three warriors, since Pagon is going to do his red buff. Gold Fury, as you had mentioned, spawned in. And. And actually, a little bit of a surprising turn of events. The Warriors are going to let this one lie. It probably has something to do with the fact that Sot just takes a Tier 1 on right, continues pushing it down, keeping pressure on, right? That's what the, the team is doing right now. And even though it's maybe not overwhelming, it's those not even death by a thousand cuts. It's like death by a hundred larger than small cuts. Larger than small? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> Come on. I don't know, man. <laughs> I lost it halfway through, all right? <laughs> it's all right. I, I, I can... Don't worry, I can follow that thread, and in this case, you're right. Because Sot, <laughs> because Sot split pushing, the Oni Warriors feel like they can just let this Gold Fury stand by for the time being. They don't need to make a pull. He's able to get so much farm. And Lazbra's over there. He's trying to get some farm as well. He's like, hey, if, if we're just letting these waves go, I'm going to make Nika the new jungler, and I'm just going to farm waves, try to get some itemization online, try and yeah. get an impactful ultimate once this Gold Fury fight actually starts up. But I'm thinking Net and Awesome J could just do the Gold Fury themselves. They've got plenty of damage. they got plenty of sustain. And it looks like I was right. They're going to yeah. start it up. They're going to say, you know what, Charlie? That's a good idea. But Boat's here. Half health already. No, nope, I lied. Yeah. He was scared. <laughs> walked up, walked back. Well, and admittedly, when I saw the rest of the Warriors join the fray, I'd also run away from that site instantly. Oh, yeah. Pyromancer down. Gold Fury now towards the Warriors. Means that Fire Giant's the only thing left. 18 minutes in. That's been the magic number over the last few years. The Warriors aren't going to be looking for that just yet. A pick would open the door for a Fire Giant conversation. Right now, they're going to be opening the door to the base. They're knocking down Tier 1 Tower. Staying a little aggressive, looking for the Tier 2. Panatom hanging around just outside the lane. Nika actually teleporting in. I was thinking he was going to go for a loop around. Instead, walks in, eats a ton of damage. Burn, burn, burn. Netroid and Pagon yep. to frontliners. They're eating well. Yep, a lot of damage. And because of that, Nika teleports in and goes... Eh, maybe this fight wasn't as good as we thought. No pulls. Mike and Nika had an opportunity to try and pull someone back in, but couldn't find it. Because of that, the split up is happening. 4,000 gold. Yep, and it's, it's only climbing. This is, again, this isn't a massive lead. It is still possible for the Jade Dragons to fight back in if they're able to find a split fight, a 4v5, something like that. But given the Oni Warriors' track record, there's a reason Netroid's not in left lane right now. He, he wants an opportunity to go for FG. They want to try and 50-50, or at the very least, force a fight. Because because the Jade Dragons are not so far behind, they're going to be pressured to try and defend. They're going to step forward, and that's when the Oni Warriors will try and strike. It really does lie a lot of pressure onto PBM and Nika, though. If they're able to find a pull, start the fight off early, maybe force an undying love from Awesome Jake, that could go in their favor. But it's just been so hard to hit this Afro. She's very slippery. Safety. Walks oh around. Even goodness. avoids the stun right there. Pagon. Can't quite say the same, actually. Half health. Pagon's two levels up and just took so much damage. Yeah, Agni absolutely slamming it right now. Bombs doing a lot. Pyromancer free because of the poke out. So the dragons get a lot without having to get too much to start it off. And Trelly, that goes to show, and, and that's what I see these fights as right now, is a lot of this damage, especially from Dardes, but any poke that they can get out massive. The Warriors, though, they're going to try to press the arena button like they did last week. Fire Giant, half health already. They're shredding it, and they're going to go for the 50-50. Boulder dropped. They're looking the for dragons. dragons. Take it away, and they get a kill onto Panatom. And now the Warriors have to figure something out. But Net, he dies off. You get Mike. But at what cost? Nika now chasing down Pagon. The rest of the dragons coming through. Stuns have to be good. Pagon's damage is right there. Sot helps pick up Vote. Double kill for the solo laner, and they've got to turn that attention elsewhere. Jake doing everything he can to keep his his mid laner alive, and he's doing a lot of work. Helps keep him go. Sot triple, triple kill for Sot, and he's going to continue this chase. Lasbro over the wall gets him out of there. Jake looking for the link, but it is a 2v2 jungle and solo, and solo in support for either squad. Fire Giant left for Lasbro and Nika. And Charlie, we learned this last week with the Warriors. Sometimes they don't care about the objective, they care about the fight. Seriously? This one goes roughly even. Yep, in this case, SOT is an absolute menace. This Guan Yu is going to be a problem, but we're not able to keep the carries alive. Panatom dies before even going up into the powwow. If the fight was that even, and let's be honest, it was a little bit more Warriors-focused towards the end, if Jake was able to link 
with SOT before that chase down ensued. Nika might have found himself dead because the cavalry charge was going to come back up by nature of cooldowns and the way that Guan Yu's kit works. So if the, if the Palau comes through, that goes a lot more warrior sided. But the stolen objective means that the Jade Dragons are in the driver's seat for the time being. Or at the very least, they don't. They don't have to worry about the Oni Warriors yeah. driving. The, the, the Oni Fury certainly will go down here, probably in favor of the Warriors, unless the Jade Dragons want to step up. I'm looking at the Relics. Not looking too good on either side, but definitely more Warriors sided. Because Sot's going to have his Sunder up, he's going to have Teleport, Blink, and the Palau still available for Panatom. And possibly a cutoff here. Boat and PBM are caught out. Stun from Sot has to connect. He holds as long as he can, still finds it. Needs some damage follow-up. Well, be able to get that from his team. That being said, the tier two push and, and specifically the damage on the mic seems to be insane. Two TKOs. Vote, no relics to his name, no ult to his name. Now an open opportunity. Lasbro pushing down mid, gets the tier one there, has a minion wave with him, and Nika is gonna spot out this Oni Fury. Question for the solo laner of the dragons, what will he do? Step forward, boulders available, has burst, throws a little early. Warriors get the Fury, despite a really good bounce in favor of Nika. I think Lazbro wins this 1v1. Pantom is just too far behind. Is he trying to dash in here? Would be risky, but it looks like the rest of the team is trying to cut him off. lazbro has been split pushing, if you've noticed. He, yeah. Whenever the team's fighting, he's over in right lane, he's pushing down mid lane, getting lots of towers. The Jay Dragons are almost caught up in the gold department. That, that Fire Giant Steel will certainly help, but it's been a lot of this Bakasura saying, hey, I'm going to go get level 20. Hopefully you guys don't need me. And because Dardaz has been pumping out all these damage numbers and the, and the stuns, things of that nature, the Jade Dragons have been able to claw back into a relatively even game coming into this next Fire Giant, which is going to be a big deal. I think that the, the, the growing issue, of course, is going to be SOT. The 4-0 Guan Yu, he went <laughs> transcendent, is yeah. doing so much damage, and I haven't seen his health bar drop much at all. The carries, of course, on the Oni Warriors are still a threat, but... This Guan Yu is essentially 1v1-ing anyone that doesn't have protections built. And has upgraded starter. Actually, upgraded starter for quite a few members of the Warriors here. So maybe playing catch up on the Dragons. Although balanced out by some upgraded starters that exist on the Dragons that don't exist for the Warriors. Little power spike. Speaking of power spikes, oh my god, Mike. Half his health gone in the blink of an eye. Pyromancer pulled by the Warriors. Boulder over the wall. Little too late there for Nika. But you have to admire the gumption from the Hercules. The Warriors are playing this, uh, Trelly, the same way that they would be playing it if they had a 10,000 gold yep. right now. They're just stepping up to the objectives, forcing a fight. And like you had mentioned, it's only a few hundred gold separating them. That Fire Giant power play, positive for the Dragons, pretty much only because of Lazarus' presence on the map. Gets the Tier 2 in mid, clears out a few towers, as you had mentioned, with the split push. Keeps things as close to even as he can. Now that they're both level 20, though, and, and you see the serrated edge finish for Panatom, 1v1s. If they are met in the jungle, does Bakasura still have the edge? Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I think Panatom is looking at specifically Dardes and and maybe if Mike ults early. You don't want a 1v1 Bakasura. He's been split pushing for a reason. He wants to be the strongest 1v1 on the map. My issue, however, is how long is he going to be split pushing? Lasbra is still over on left. Fire Giant's here. Uh, you, if you're going to get ahead, get all this farm, you got to use it in a team fight. So finally, the Bakasura is rotating in from behind, but the Fire Giant started up, and it's already half health. Had to take it carefully. Didn't want to get spotted by the minions. Walks across one of his own wards. Fire Giant, as you mentioned, low. And there's going to be the Polymorph. Doesn't confirm it. Warriors Baca able to pick behind, that one though. up. And now they're looking for a lot of damage. Baka comes in from behind, but he's not going to find anyone as the flicker forward, the dash forward from Netroid gets him out of there, but finally gets some damage out there. But it's Sot one more time, Trelly. Double kill for him. Panatom goes in the back. Another triple for Sot as he keeps picking him up. Vote. Last man standing. Costs him two to get there. The Warriors get to continue running down mid. I mean, you lose Netroid, so you don't have your ADC, but at this point, Sot's got back-to-back -back triple kills at these Fire Giant fights, and no one can kill this Guan Yu. You still have Pagon, who's got enhanced auto attacks in the kit. This Tier 2 tower certainly going to go down. How much more time do you have? I'm thinking Phoenix Pressure could be on the mind here of the Oni Warriors. The question is, are you worried about how much damage Vote can do? I'm thinking probably not if SOT's here. Jake steps forward, tanks a little bit, Vote, like you said. <laughs> What are you going to do? No relics, no ult. No presence around the Phoenix mid. Goes down towards the Warriors. And now they're going to back up, Charlie. Play it a little slower. Tier 2 on left and right still up. 
So they take the only Phoenix they're able to, strip away some of these camps. Primal Fury is about to be coming up. Uh, but more importantly, Netruod and Panatom are about to be up. And that's going to open up some opportunities for the Warriors to maybe knock on, a, on the door of a few more Phoenixes. Yep. Primal Fury. Two more Tier 2 towers to go through, but... That's a lot of gold. Yep. It is a lot of gold to be spent plenty in pocket here for the three remaining members of the Warriors that actually have that Fire Giant buff. And it was a good rotation in. I mean, Lasper does get to the back line. He finds some kills, but unfortunately, it's not tanky enough to get enough damage. I think the dive of the Jade Dragons is lacking. This is sort of... I'm, I'm not going to say the hindrance of a, of a Sylvanas. You just can't get to the back line, right? Yeah. There, there is value in just peeling, right? Saying, hey, I'm going to heal up my carries. I'm going to stay back. I'm not going to get that blink engage. We've got a Baka and a Herc for that. Because the Oni Warriors have so much dive with the Dashi, with the Guan Yu, and of course, one of them being linked to an Aphrodite, it becomes a little bit more difficult to find those solo kills, or in this case, that amount of dive. But look at the J Dragons here. Grouped as five in the jungle. Panatom sort of just watching them for the time being. He knows someone's here. I don't think he realizes just how many J Dragons are about to gank him. Let's see if he can even get up into the Palau in time. Doesn't seem to have the opportunity. Nope. <laughs> no, he cannot. <laughs> oh, man, for the Dragons, maybe a little bit too much. You know, 1v1s, that's one conversation. 1v4, uh, the Dragons looking pretty good. Starting to get aggressive towards the right side, Phoenix. Playing it a little more cautiously. And Trelly, this is where things get interesting. I think it's two, two pieces of a conversation I want to have here. One is that a lot of these team fights have actually looked great for the Dragons until Sot. If you, t if you remove Sot from the equation, they're probably winning this game right now. The other half of that conversation is their sieges. Yep. We've seen a lot of sieges, whether they're ahead or behind, from the Dragons. That haven't looked too great. That have fallen, I mean, just flat on their face, really. You know, that's what has extended a lot of these games, is, is their ability to knock down a Phoenix, or a, even a Tier 2 tower in some instances, just hasn't stood up to what we're seeing from other teams in the league. Gore, uh, Sot's a, a confident man. Yeah. I would argue... If he's 7-0, and zero, he's, he's, his ego's out of check. I would argue an overconfident man at times. But he built blood for <laughs> <laughs> My man said, My man said, I got back-to-back -back triple kills. Those health shields would be pretty nifty. I'm going to make sure that I'm building... <laughs> I'm going to make it a Pinta next time. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I want even more damage. <laughs> and even back, Nika went in for the pull and saw it. Did not waver. Just held the back. And I, I, I want to see if he's able to get another triple kill at this point. Let's see those Blood Forge shields. The Guan Yu has been a menace. These carries have not been able to stand up. Not to say that the, the carries of the Warriors have not also been dying. I mean, Pagon going negative. Netroid in that same spot. And, of course, we saw what happened to Panatom trying to stand up against the might of the Dragons. He hasn't been able to get up to the Palau twice now. But there is a Phoenix down still for the time being on the Jade Dragons. Lasper has been able to push up the Fire Wave. But it's actually the Dragons stepping forward. They're going for a pull, but Nika, he's getting shredded by the damage of Netroid. Yeah, half health already for the Warriors. Or, sorry, for the Warrior, right? Nika. Has his teleport, so if he has to back, it's not the end of the world. Doesn't seem to be too worried about it, though. Healers on the squad always makes that a little easier. One more wave, I believe. The Fire Minions should be spawning here in mid. And that's what the Warriors have to work with. Panatom, kind of hanging on the side. If he sees Dardes. Be able to go for He's something blink here. In. Yep. Jumps in, blink, immediate half health onto the mid laner for the Dragons. That's going to be the pull See in, ya. the kill off. And starting things great for the Warriors. Panatom finally gets on that Palau and gets some work done. Netroid DPSing the Fire Giant while his team zones for him. It's a slow roll, Trelly. But they're looking for it. Speaking of looking for it right now, Lasbra. EFG too. Deep, enhanced on top of that. Lasbra's trying to get a Phoenix. He's going to back away. The Warriors with an enhanced Fire Giant should be able to push down mid, no problem. Very little resistance from the Dragons there. Yep. Dardes tries to make a flank play, just not something an Agni can do. The 1v1 versus Durkat, or <laughs> Durkat, Daji is just miserable. If you get blinked in and get hit by that burn damage, you are losing every single time. And Dardes, used both relics, could not survive. Mid Phoenix once again will drop. J Dragons are in a position where they've got to try and defend Phoenix. They don't want to step up without Dardes, though. That's going to be 10 seconds away. A good pull from Mike. Could be enough to stop the siege, but it looks like the tier two tower goes down first. All the while, Lasper still split pushing. He's got a chance to go for a wraparound play, but might be too little too late. This Phoenix is going down fast. Yeah, mid already bursted. Right gone in the blink of an eye. Mike might follow it stunned out thanks to Jacob. The damage is there, but Sot eats a lot in the process. Hasn't got a kill, hasn't got that Blood Forge shield. 
And a lot of the Warriors eating more damage than maybe they would like. Jake, single target healing, definitely struggles a little bit here. The Warriors are going to pull back. Saw it. Even cancels his back. Has the healing to maybe top off these carries. But with the gold in hand, two Phoenixes down. Trelly, the Warriors are going to take a little breath. Oni Fury's up on left. There's still a tier two over there. They've got some work to do. Yep, and they've got plenty of time at this point. The Oni Warriors are able to upgrade some relics, get some power pots. Going for the Oni Fury, tier two, Phoenix. The whole shebang. We know how this works. The, the Jade Dragons are more so interested in saving their Titan than they are trying to defend a tier two or that left side bird. It's just their engage is so difficult. We saw what happens when Mike gets left alone, and that's the curse of Sylvanas, right? If you're hitting a pole, yeah. you start with an ult. That's great. Wrath of Terra is a good engage tool, but without that blink ult, your team runs, and you're like, I'm a tree. Like, I, I, I actually cannot run with you. I'm just going <laughs> to be left out to dry. There was almost some kill return, though. SOT, as you say, got very low. Was almost able to find a, a death in that column. But Panatom wants some more 1v1s. He's going to go into last, bro. Let's see how much time he can stay here while the rest of the team groups up. Get some of the pal out. Mike Dardes around the corner. Pulls Lazbra. Stun. Stun from Dardes. Leap in from Lazbra. If he's looking to pull attention, he did exactly that. Sets up the left side Phoenix for his team, but is gone otherwise for a minute. 30 seconds left on the power play. Warriors knock down all three Phoenixes. Oni fire waves in two lanes, just Oni minions in the left. And maybe going for something massive here. Dash forward, Nika, Dardes, Mike, alone in the jungle. The melt is there. The damage is ready. And it's a slow burn, but they chop down the tree, turn their attention over towards the Hercules, but they lose Netrigoid. They get vote. Dardes goes down as well. Pagon is going massive in the fight. Needs a little more damage. Needs some help. No and he's shot. got it from Saad. They turn it. They get a triple. And Trelly, they're going to end this one with a DSI. They got the fire minions in the Titan room. Game one goes the Warriors. I mean, don't get me wrong. Awesome Jake provided a lot of healing and a lot of sustain there for Pagon, but he's just built different. My man was juking left and right. He had so much stand switch. He did so much damage. Merlin should not be able to live that long. No. That was a 4v5 that, I mean, of course, was initiated by the Oni Warriors, but it just seemed like Vote had such a good ult. The, the Hachi Man damage was pulling through. Socket's so weak. Not enough. The Afro Merlin combo was disgusting, and I don't know what to say. I don't know how anyone is supposed to beat this team. You know what? Fire Giant 1 is balanced, right? You've got a lead from the Warriors, and, and Sot gets a triple kill. Yep. Fire Giant 2, you've got a small lead for the Warriors, and Sot gets a triple kill. Yeah, I saw that. And then suddenly you get into the end, and, and it doesn't matter if it's it's Pagon who gets the triple kill, but Sot puts up 2 yep. <laughs> in the moment. Goes 9 and 0. I mean, the solo lane presence, you had mentioned it at one point when you were like, I just wonder when he's going to start rotating. When he did, it was just demise from yep. that point forward. Like Guan Yu did a ton of damage, and I think the team as a whole never lost confidence. Again, when you yeah. lose Panatom and still say, we can fight, that shows they're like, yeah, we got this in the back. When we talk about the Warriors being just mechanically fantastic players, that game is maybe the best representation of it. Even in even fights, they're just outplaying in moments like that. And they look good doing it. They're 1-0 in the set, one away from setting Smite history. We'll see if they can do it right after this break. It's not who 
Oni Warriors do Oni Warrior things in game one. And as we've now seen a few times, teams able to compete with them a bit early, even steal away a fire giant, but it only delays the inevitable. And that's an Oni Warriors win in the first game of potentially just two if they're able to keep things going in game two. And look, Pagon makes big plays happen all game long. And if you want to wear a Pagon jersey, you can. Thanks to our friends over at Skulls. Uh, not only the pros going to be wearing these jerseys this year you at home as well all the new brands to the SPL this year all currently stocked up uh, hoodies as well they're very comfortable and actually there's more apparel available online uh, thanks to our partners over at Skulls you go to shop.highrestudios.com slash SPL and grab merch for uh, for all eight teams but right now it's looking like uh, Pagon the Oni Warriors they're the good option for for jersey hoodie ownership moving forward uh, and Miff is here with me to break down exactly what happens in game one. And, and Miff, it, it looked competitive, right? I think the, the early fire giant more delays things. The early gold lead didn't get too far out of control. Three, 4,000 gold. Come team fight time. Come, okay, now we can force objectives, force Phoenix time. That's when the Oni Warriors really built their gap. Yeah, I, I thought the Jade Dragons did a great job for the first 25, 30 some odd minutes of this game of controlling pace, mitigating loss, and not allowing the gold lead to balloon so far out of control that they were removed from contention. At the 25-ish minute mark, it was around 30,000, perhaps 4,000 gold for the Oni Warriors. They're still within striking distance of the Jade Dragons, and that reveals itself around that fire giant that does go the Jade Dragons' way. But what I didn't like was the Jade Dragons essentially off the back of winning that Fire Giant engagement saying, okay, this is the best fight we've had so far. Yep. Let's chase out, try and do as much as we can. And then they do a little bit too much. Uh, lose out on their Fire Giant power play. Does delay the game, as you said. 
from there, it's a Jade Drag deciding, okay, five on fives haven't exactly gone our way. SOT's triple killed us twice. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and try and split push, see if we can split up the map. At that point, there's a baton pass. SOT no longer having to do all the triple killing because there was no team fights coming his way. And then Pagon and Panatom able to make a couple big individual plays. Panatom around the fire, uh, establishing a kill onto Dardes, which secures them the objective. And then Pagon with perhaps one of the most fun engagements in the game. What's on your screen right now and maybe even one of the most exciting plays I've seen all year with that 1v3 turnaround completely out of HP, down to 10%, able to survive for upwards of 15 seconds while simultaneously dealing damage. Just a mechanical spotlight. And that's how the Oni Warriors have won out a lot of their games. You think there's an opportunity, but they do a lot with a little. We'll give Awesome Jake a little credit there for uh, sustaining Pagon up a bit in that last fight. Aphrodite doing Aphrodite things as well. But 33,000 damage from Pagon in what was maybe like exactly a 30-minute game, maybe just shy of 30-minute game. 33,000 damage is a, a fantastic pace. I mean, that's an amazing pace. It, and just shows that Pagon's playing like one of the best, if not the best, mid laners in the league right now. It's hard because, you know, Myth, now we're, we're on our fifth week and tenth set of talking about how do you beat the Sony Warriors team in picks and bans? Do you try to match the pace? Do you try to outpace them? There just simply haven't been great answers. Though the Jay Dragons did get themselves into a, maybe you call it a coin flip style of situation there by slowing things down, which is really what they've done throughout a lot of the year. That's a tough look right there for, for the Dragons. I think it's a team that's on the verge of losing their sixth set in a row. If they can't find a turnaround win against the Oni Warriors, it'd be a tough way to move into the playoffs and Masters around the corner. Would be. The J Dragons, though, certainly capable of finding some sort of fight back here. I liked the, the micro adjustments they had made for themselves. I thought PBM looks much better on that Sylvanas than I had projected. Yeah. Does not fall throughout the early. Finds a couple of integral pulls. The healing starts to stack up as well. Once the five on five started to happen, though, it happened to PBM. And Sylvanas being as immobile and unsurvivable as he is, did struggle a little bit towards those late game five on fives. But as for the early game... I, I thought Mike was doing a great job setting up for his team. Well, what adjustments do the Jade Dragons make? We find out just around the corner. They'll be in first pick, leaving the Oni Warriors on the other side. Remember, we raised a couple questions around Jake and where his god priority would fall. We wondered if the Jade Dragons would take away the Nox, take away the Aphrodite. They left both open, and Jake opted for the Afro in another amazing Aphrodite game from Awesome Jake. And I think that's a story we've talked a bit about, but it feels like this is still Jake just doing Jake things. It's just surrounded by a team that also likes doing Jake things. And so you look at some of the roster changes that that's happened. It feels like a win-win for for kind of a splitting up of that old Bolts duo lane where Barra and, and Hurrywind have been playing some really good smite together, but but so have uh, Jake and, and Netrioid, it seems like. Which one's the bigger winner, you think? Got to be Jake. Got to be right? Jake. I mean, he's, he's, on, he's on the undefeated that's team. That's right. Um, but it, it seems like a parting of ways that was just a, a play style mismatch more than anything else now that we've got a little bit more data on how Yeah, they both, both legitimately have a claim on a, it was mutual. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they might mean it. Hebo was banned out going into game one. Uh, not banned out, left open, and picked first overall by the Jade Dragons. 22 games played. Just run an 80% pick ban rate. Uh, leaves open some flexibility for the J Dragons. Could be jungle, could be mid. Yeah, I wonder, what do the Oni Warriors pick up in response? The Hachiman has been very highly prioritized, and the Aphrodite was a lock-in last time around, so why switch things up? A very aggressive duo lane immediately for the Oni Warriors. And I love how these two synergize with each other. I'm not talking about Jake and Nat. I'm talking about Hachiman and Aphrodite. Uh, the EI Jutsu, the dash forward from Hachiman, generally will put him out of range of Aphrodite's own back off, but she's linked up. It'll connect that slow regardless, uh, so long as you're able to hit it off of your ally. So stun into slow combo into perhaps another sun could just be incredibly hard to deal with for any hunter that the Jade Dragons could lock in from here. Maybe you want to pick up something like a Jingwei to deal with, with the aggressive tendencies of the Oni Warriors in their duo lane. I like this, though, from the Jade Dragons. Generally, the only Warriors, when they play up against Hebo, immediately lock in that Fenrir. One of the best counter matchups in the game. Scales very quickly. Uh, can really slow down that Hebo. 
So the Jade Dragons go ahead and remove that potential yep. by taking the Fenrir for themselves and find themselves another Playmaker. This does, however, restrict the Hebo. Will likely be headed towards mid now. Which does is that a, strike a, you as a Dardes pick? I mean, Dardes has played it. Is it a Dardes pick? No, it's not Hera, you know, but right. he's capable, I'm sure. We'll need to really be careful about his positioning and crushing wave timing, I think, going to be a major concern in some of these team fights. If Aphrodite's there and playing on the ball, she can just immune it out for her ally, and it's always going to put Hebo out of position. And now with the cringe E couple combo of Aphrodite and Susano, you better believe this Hebo is going to be accosted. I'm thinking so. And I'm thinking it's one of Jake's best picks in the Afro and one of Panatom's best picks in the Susano. Hachiman's just like a top of the barrel hunter now. Right. Again, but but see, it's like the only warriors are in this perfect spot where the style of game they want to play is supported by characters that can play that style of game. The the, 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 the playmaking on, on one end, but the grouping and team fighting on the other end. Could you imagine if it were Susano mid? I actually can. You think Pagon wants to, to relive the, the glory days? I can't imagine that. Susano and uh, Hebo. That'd be miserable for Hebo. Yeah? That'd be real miserable. Well, could happen. Could. I'm not, I'm not ruling it out. Would need to see some more magical damage. And normally you'll see, you know, a Hebo in the jungle if you're going to have someone physical over in mid to, to supply a bit more of that magical burst damage, but... You really can't rule anything out with the Oni Warriors, and that's got to be something that Jade Dragons are mindful of moving into their next few bands. And I think their bands are going to tell us uh, exactly where they think the Susano is going. And I, I still think largely likely to end up in Panatom's hands, but look, Pagon's feeling it. Don't think you can rule that one out. Rom, banned out by the Oni Warriors. And I think Dragon's still sensing that Pagon needs something here. I'll take away the Thoth. It's more of the artillery range damage. Yeah, I wonder now. The dragons could still just keep rolling with mid lane bands, and I wouldn't hate it. Maybe an Agni, uh, just to remove some of the persistent damage on field, the AoEs, uh, and just how strong that god is right now. Also has a pretty decent matchup into the Hebo, able to keep him at range. I wouldn't be surprised to see a CERN ban, and the Oni Warriors will do exactly that. Just get rid of those priority hunters. Now you got to fall down a tier. Could be... That Ishtar is the lock-in. We've seen her a fair deal. Jingwei is still available as well. So hmm. plenty of decent hunters. I think of the hunters available, I, w I would like to see Jingwei for the Jade Dragons. Just a bit of safety to deal with that hyper-aggressive duo lane from the Oni Warriors. And she scales incredibly well into the late game with you know how, crit good, uh, how good crit is right now. Dardas has played Hebo twice in his career. Said he played it before. He's won one of them. <laughs> That's pretty good. 1.1 KDA across two games. Couldn't tell you the last time that happened. Well, at least one of these listings is from uh, from the SSG days. Baba Yaga. How did I forget about Baba Yaga? And she makes it through this far? Baba is like such an under-the-radar pick that ends up just owning like half the games that she plays in. Half the games are like, Paul playing her, though. Right. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Get a little Deso, get a little Divine, get a little Prophetic. Something tells me Pagon is going to forego the uh, the de defensive itemization in his build, but not an easy team to kill off that the Oni Warriors are drafting here so far. Jade Dragons, they've got a lot of burst damage, and they've got the ability to hand deliver some picks to that burst damage. Not and they've got a King Arthur and potentially an Ishtar. Not loving how King Arthur is going to play into this draft. Feels like King Arthur... Just doesn't have displacement. And, and I'm going to quantify this argument. A lot of the best frontliners right now have instant CC or instant displacement CC. So Hercules, the ability to pull someone out of line. Or maybe you think of the ability to just stay in that back line with the Vamanas or the Osiruses that are starting to come into favor. Or hmm. the instant stun and sustain of Guan Yu. King Arthur used to create space by being just threatening enough that you can't ignore him. He had just enough damage. That, that mid laners and ADCs had to be concerned, and he was very tanky. In current meta, in current patch, tanks aren't exactly all that tanky in the late game. If a hunter is itemized to deal with frontline, or if the mage is full stacked on the build, it, it just feels like anybody is going to fall down pretty quickly. So King Arthur has struggled in that matchup and in, in this meta where, oh uh, yeah, I could go in and turn into a Beyblade for six seconds, and I'll do 500 damage over that six seconds. 
oh, God, they hit me for 1,000 in the first two seconds of the spin. Yep. So uh, I'm really concerned about that King Arthur pick and how well it's going to perform. From ahead, amazing, of course. That's everything, though, in Smite. Uh, and King Arthur, I think, will struggle to find that lead. Or well, he's going to have a lane matchup against SOT's Thor. Will be Thor solo Susano jungle for the Oni Warriors. Oni Warriors got some initiation on, on their side as well, Myth. As a full five, does Oni Warriors team tell you they want to group up and run you down? No, this is a pick based composition for sure. Have Susano and Afro linked up running through the jungle. Have Thor leverage that global presence, likely out of the soul lane, and, and just run amok on the map and take 1v1s or 2v2s as often as you can. The late game five on five for the Oni Warriors doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence. It's a very squishy composition. Your initiation is generally lacking. It's we're really reliant on either Anvil of Dawn from Thor or a pull-in from Susano. Aphrodite's not really making up the majority of your initiation. Baba Yaga doesn't really have it either. So I think the Oni Warriors are really looking to control the early game in this one, Dave. If they fall behind and it's three, 4,000 gold as you start to get in towards Gold Furies or Fire Giants, this Jade Dragon's Draft, just by nature of being much more standard, uh, I, I think we'll have an easy time. Well, Miff, I don't want the thread to get lost here. I mean, this is just another SPL set for the Oni Warriors because they've had first seed in this division locked up a long time ago. But there is history on the line now. Oni Warriors won three sets at the kickoff tournament, have won nine straight sets during the SPL matches here in Season 10. This would be an undefeated phase. This is the last set of the phase for the Oni Warriors. A perfect 10-0 and a 13-set win streak for the Oni Warriors in the SPL and Pro League play here in Season 10, which would be the all-time record. And so, while the Oni Warriors don't have any standings to play for, they have smite history to play for here in Game 2. One more game win out of the next two. Maybe just the next one if they're playing their game. Uh, the Oni Warriors will set the longest set win streak in Smite history. So history on the line. Can they get it done? We'll find out with Gormizer and Trelly. Thanks so much, Dave and Mifflin. And that's right, Trelly, right here. Right now, the opportunity. The gauntlet has been thrown down. The Warriors getting to choose whether or not they step up to the challenge. And <laughs> it's, it's this weird duality. This is a hyper-aggressive comp. You had heard the, the desk talk about it. If this comp starts to fall apart, maybe gets a little shanky. Better odds in favor of the Dragons this time, according to chat. 21 instead of the 18 we saw last time. And maybe those odds come from the fact that it's a Warriors game, too. Which is, if they're gonna lose, yep. like it seems to be here for some reason. They do get a little bit silly in game twos. Considering the amount of damage that they have on their side. Oh man, this is annoying. Yeah, Mike was able to just hijack the green buff. I was gonna say, he's got... The horrific, so if they try to stick around and, and really confirm that buff, it would have taken a long time to try and stall out with Mike. So this is an annoying play that puts their dual lane a bit behind up until the steal comes through, and it looks like they were able to confirm it. But now uh -oh. here comes Lazbra, and there's no way Jake can make it out here. No one's even rotating over. He's done. Yeah, leap for the stun. Stun follow-up immediately from PVM. And if you're looking for a first blood, we're talking about the level 2 cringe gang. No, he starts it this game immediately in the jungle. Hits level two super early because of it. Good first blood goes onto the jungler. Pretty much the opposite of what happened last game. Yeah, Pagon sitting in mid lane and Lasper's just hiding. And it looks like the blink in from Dart has now Pagon's in some trouble. Does have the tower, and that's going to be enough. Panasom's here, pull back on the Lasper, but they don't have the damage. The knockups from Dart is too good. Still got to play a little carefully. Dart steps forward, water hands a little short. Panasom gets to walk away. Lasbra, though, still hanging around. That presence from the Finry right now, Trelly. It's starting enough, man. I mean, he almost got a second kill, almost got a third kill in certain moments. And it seems like the Dragons recognized. They said, okay, if this is the pace of game you want to play, let's play that pace of game. We'll show it. We can do it the same way. Mike's been doing it for years. Unfortunately for Mike right now, forced to turn tail and run. Low health, Heavenly Banner, gets some damage out there. Stun on to vote, forces the beads, damage Whoa. from the droid, and he finds the autos to boot. Look at him celebrating in the camera, and for good reason. What a play from the carry on the Warriors. I mean, he just doesn't miss, and that is just going in consistently. Didn't put a point into his first ability, so he isn't going to be able to finish that kill, but still, ridiculous gameplay. Remember, Awesome Jake gets first blood, it still hits level two before Mike because of that invade. And because of that, so much damage. Heavenly Banner into the AI Jutsu and two auto attacks to confirm that kill. 
you gotta be hurting about that one if you're PBM. One juked auto attack or like a body block there coming through from your ADC would have been enough, but he goes down another duo lane looking just fine here for the Oni Warriors. Doesn't mean that the the rest of the Warriors aren't hurting a bit. There was some pressure put on the Pagon. He's not going to have beat for another 80 seconds. Those Baba Yaga might have to watch out yeah. once Lazarus takes over level 5 if he's able to do so quickly. But seeing as he's only level 3, probably not going to be able to get access to that ultimate before Pagon hits level 5 or even in a minute when he's able to grab that CC immunity. But at the very least, a blue buff mm -hmm. invade attempt from Lazarus. Phantom's a little late to the party. Phantom should catch it out, though. There's going to be sod over the wall with a wall of his own. Blue buff secured, actually picked up by Lazarus. Maybe not the ideal world. No speed buff for a little while, but he might get the opportunity to reset oh. it. Auto's good from Sot, chases it down, gets the kill. And now it's whether or not he can stay alive. He's taking a lot of damage, a lot of poke from Nika. Panatom comes in, good pull back, and it's two kills all on the Warriors. Well played by them, all off the back of a blue buff invade from the Dragon. How about a solo from Pagon? No! Oh, no! A solo from Dart as more like it. All he had to do was run in a straight line. <laughs> Pagon gets soloed by the tower. This is the aggressive pace we expect from the Oni Warriors, but I'm going to repeat something that I think, now that I'm hearing it in my head, I think we've said this every single time we've casted a Warriors set. Just don't gank, don't gank Sot. Just yeah, don't, don't gank do it. It's, it's bad news it, bears. When does it work out? I've never seen it work out. I mean, I'm sure it has recently, but... Well, has it, though? That's what I'm saying. Every time someone come, tries to gank Sot, he ends up getting a solo I mean, kill. he was 9-0 last game. I know last week he got his second 2v1 kill under yep. tower. Uh, I think he might have done two in that week. Don't gank Sot. Don't gank Sot. He's proven himself. Don't go over there. It's not worth it. You picked up a blue buff, and then unfortunately... You get killed and Nika dies for the overaggression. You know what? I feel like we could maybe expand it to a broader statement. Stop diving towers sub five minutes. <laughs> it feels like that's, I mean, Pagon just yep. now dies to it. That's where we saw Lazbra die to it last game. Uh, you know, the, the, the kills in, in solo lane for the Warriors is just good play, right? That's not coming down from the towers. But elsewhere, it's coming from the towers. Of course, in dual lane, it was also. Just good play. Stuns from Jake, making sure no that beads. stays a little awkward. No beads, no ult, nothing to say about it. Sot, though, I thought he was going to maybe get out of that one, maybe with a hammer, something special that gets him beyond the wall. Won't be able to find it. And it's a clean kill. Nika, Lazra together with a good gank. Yep. Lazra proves. So you can gank him. Yep. Lazra proves <laughs> that he can bleed. If he doesn't have beads and you chain your CC well enough, should be able to find an easy kill onto the Thor. Tried to go for the ultimate, but got CC'd out of it and was not able to. Dardes once. They're going again! I was going to say, Dardes wants a crushing wave here, but isn't able to find it. Pagon does have home sweet home, but there's the blink. How much is the shield? It's enough! Panatom's here as well. Pulls Dardes back in. Dardes doesn't have a lot of mana to work with. Pagon gets some damage, Panatom. Secures the kill. Panatom was like, dude, I wanted to give it to you. You just couldn't finish <laughs> the kill. He said, like, hey, I'm going to let you get the 1v1, but you, you couldn't finish it in time when I panicked, so he had to take it away. Lasper was nearby, was not able to make it through. And that's what Dardes wanted, right? He was like, how much is this shield going to catch for my crushing wave? Can I find the kill? Unfortunately, was not able to. The duality of the Warriors, by the way. It's actually nothing in the booth. All five of them, and, and to the point where they've even admitted that, are almost freakishly on the same page. Yep. Oxy's not. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, uh, what was it? it was during their end. They get repelled a couple of times at the base because they're they're just diving fountain at that point looking for kills. Oxy's head in hands, letting out a sigh, going, "Come on, why?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I walk past the booth, see the warriors all just cheesing, like they're having the time of their lives. They're laughing. Duality of the warriors, and I think that's part of it. Is, is you know what Pagon wanted that solo kill. Yep. Panatom made the play that made sure both of them stayed alive. Sometimes you go for the fun, sometimes the fun coincides with the good play, and I think they're getting a little bit of all of it. Four to three, read the kills. This time last game, Trelly, Gold Fury was started by the Warriors. Probably not going to be as urgent this time around, but the kills have still been flowing, and Netroid's going to be looking for more pulls. CC immunity off a of vote. There's going to be a stun as well from Jake. The dash can only do so much. Jake picks up the kill. Net does the damage. And the duo lane looks good in the 2v1. Yep, and there's an oh, ultimate wow. on a PBM. They've got plenty of CC. Who's going to credit the kill? It looks like Panatom yep. gets a killing spree. Three and zero. That's got to be the Gold Fury call. Sot makes the rotation over to mid. Sorry, Mike. Your, your team has abandoned you in this case. Sot? 
Backing to base, actually. No oh, teleport. They, they, they don't need that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Off to the wayside. Who cares about him? Gold Fury. You'd called it. Started up a little later than I thought, but with four members of the Warriors here, it's going to be a very simple one. And admittedly, Trelly, at, in the blink of an eye, pretty much the exact same timing as the last one. Maybe a few seconds later. But otherwise, great play from the Warriors. We see how they're going to be starting it up. And they're going for vote immediately again. That dash not going to get you very far. Panatom picks up a fourth. And poor vote. Zero, two, and one gets put down to the ground again. Yeah, a little bit concerning there. I don't think vote recognized everyone was there, but the Gold Fury goes down. Maybe he thought, oh, they're going to back up and they're just going to leave after the Gold Fury. But they're able to find an easy gank. And now just grab some of the Bastions in tow. Lazra. Got active a little bit on the right side of the map. Immediately goes back over to Gangsop, but since then has just been farming. Hasn't been able to match the pace of this Susano. Not many can. Panatom has a very high win rate on this pick for a reason. He's able to find those opportunities to get aggressive, and when he's not, he's constantly farming. And that's an issue. Look, this, this was Lazbra trying to get aggressive on the pick, yeah. on trying to clear a wave. And this is how that trade goes. You don't have many options to try and fight. I'm thinking it's, it's Sot, or you're not ganking anyone. And when those beads are down... It could be a good opportunity. Lasbra does have Ragnarok available, and there's no beats for another 77 seconds. Solo lane's where Lasbra needs to be if he's trying to get aggressive. Ult almost back up. Dardes dodges the L. And it looks like he's going to dodge another one here. No, takes too much damage. Phantom goes in, gets the kill under the tower. Lasbra over the he's wall, and there's going to be oh. the Typhoon just a little short. Doesn't find the damage. River's Rebuke keeping him locked in. What a beautiful Riptide as well. Gets some tower damage out there. Mike trying to pick it up, gets it with the stun. Now Lasbra comes back in, shuts down Panatom, and turns an aggressive player from the Warriors around. That's a huge ultimate there for Mike. You got to be pumped if you're able to land that Riptide. And he's got the lockdown to prove it. The beads go down from Pagon, and Lazbro's able to show up to grab one of those kills as well. And that's exactly what the Jade Dragons needed. It's not easy to make an ult like that. You need to have setup, and you need to be able to find the perfect opportunity. And Mike said, we're not getting too old that easy. You're going to have to work for it. Work for it. Netroid working for it right now. Eats the stun from the Ishtar. Banner a little late. Vote dashes away. Gets to survive this time, Jelly. If Nat had more mana, maybe he beads that and keeps going. Instead, a little bit of a pause. Maybe for the first time in nine and a half minutes. I mean, it feels like since First Blood, it has just been action, action, action. And what I think is interesting, at least in my mind, is that the, the dragon stepped up and they said, all right, you want to play fast? We'll play fast. And the warriors were like, awesome, let's play, let's play fast. Let's do it. And they match the pace of the dragons happily here. Still leading slightly, going for some small invades. Pagon just jumped over the wall. There was no one else with him. Like Jake's like, I can't jump over. I'll he come with you. He does not care. And that is <laughs> that is just terrifying. And I, I tend to agree with Dave. I don't think Pagon's going to build defense <laughs> here. It is the, the meta build, and it is just easy, and you get extra prod. But even 0-2, Pagon's like, I just want to do more damage, man. I, I don't want Prophetic Cloak slowing me down. I'm jumping over walls. I'm fighting 1v1s. And Lasper's sticking around here. Remember, no beads available for Pagon, so if he's able to find the stun... Could find an opportunity, but Undying Love from Awesome Jake might be able to stop some of that. Lazbra jumps in, forces home sweet home. Fire thrown out by Pagon, going to trail the jungler. Nika rotated over as well. The dragon's unable to make anything happen. Pyromancer up on the board, seems to be the target for the warriors. Maybe they can find a pick as well. Nika hanging out, and he's alone. Spotted out by Sot. Wall down, stuns out the King Arthur, double tap onto the damage, immediate into the Burgers 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 Barrage, and locks him up to the sky. Nika tries to stay alive, but Trelly had only goes so far here. A couple of stumbles for both me and him, and unfortunately for him, results in 30 seconds in the penalty box, and a Pyromancer for the Warriors. But nothing for you. No negatives in nope. that regard, so it looks like the Fury like slight is spawning up here. slight embarrassment for 10 seconds. <laughs> and we can live with that. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's another day in the life for us. But the Fury started up here, and the Jade Dragon stepped forward. Sot goes to the sky, but Pagon might be the target of the aggression. This could be huge, though. Maybe he gets the stop, looking for the dunk. Where's he going to find it? Lands inside the River's Rebuke. Can't help Pagon immediately, but the wall comes out afterward. Locks down Lazbra. They just need one more hit. Netroid finds that one with the dash. Now has to play careful. Low damage. Vote. Traces in the auto, gets the kill. Pagon can't help. Sot can't secure the kill. So they go one for one. Panatom pushes up right, but no Fury play from the Dragons. Yep, love that from the J Dragons. They find their aggression. Pagon almost goes down, and Sot, rare miss on the ultimate. Might have been able to find a kill if he did land on a Dardes. 
Lasper goes down. And of course, Netroid also loses his life, and that's a big kill. The 2-0 Hachiman was a bit of an issue for Vote. Wasn't able to step up. A lot of chase down potential from that mounted archery. So now it'll be a little bit of free farm here for Vote for the time being. But that Primal Fury is still a big target. That all starts from the over-aggression towards Pyromancer. Remember, Nika goes down. He finds his ultimate to stall out. Then the Jade Dragon decided to set up a bit of an ambush over towards Pagon. And it does look like, unfortunately, Pagon does need that protection. He's 0-2 on the Baba. <laughs> he said, you know what? My relics keep going down. I keep being a target. I am going to have to grab that Prophetic Cloak eventually. You know, sometimes it's just harder to dive towers if you go full damage. That is true. <laughs> Unfortunate, but Pagon wants to get aggressive. Yeah, and look, he I mean, he literally, his first death was just running Dardes down under the tower. Good turnaround for Dardes. Bad scenario for Pagon. So an opportunity here to maybe continue his aggressive play style. We'll just call it 0-2 and 5 in mid. 5-1 and 2. Look, Panatom's been popping off. Primal Fury's up. Vote, Lasbra, now joined by the rest of the dragons. Everyone but Sot seems to be hanging over here around the Fury. Primal, depending on who you ask, less important, more important than some of the others. Jake gets a stun onto Dardes, forces the crushing wave. Panatom goes for the Typhoon, gets the knockup, tries to chase him down, but a Great River's Rebuke from Mike slows him down. Panatom has to dash away. And unfortunately, Pagon goes in too Pagon's deep. In? Pagon's trying to do more, and he stays alive! He does finally get taken down, but he sets up so much with his damage. Here Netroid comes goes forward and gets the kill on to Dardes. Lasper's already gone, and Sot, like you said, making a big splash. Anvil of Dawn to the back. Stun on to Vote is so clean, so well played, and they're staying alive. Netroid re-aggresses. Jake earning his paycheck, keeping his carry alive. Sot earning his paycheck, killing off the dragons. And it is a four-for-one swing. Pantom's and maybe though. gonna be five. Panatom here needs the pull. A little bit of CC goes a long way. They're gonna dive the tier one tower here. Damage is not quite good enough. And Nika gets to walk away from this one, but Trelly, it's because the rest of the Warriors, they're focused on, on something a little more important. They go for the Primal Fury. Yep, and they are gonna be able to grab that Primal Fury. <laughs> Again, I the over-aggression from the Oni Warriors, and it was over-aggression. Pagon blasts off into the enemy team. He says, hey, Awesome Jake's kiss to me. I've got some healing. I've got some protections. I've got some extra damage. I'll be fine. He could have stayed in the back line, but I guess because Pantom took some damage early on. Was it a bit of a threat? Forcing out Dardes' ultimate defensively before the fight really even begins. A little bit of overaggression, but at the very least, the Oni Warriors still win that fight handedly. They get their Primal Fury as they wanted. And Nika, the only one to stay alive. This King Arthur... Has been able to do some good damage, be able to set up some CC, but Sot holds on to Dardes. He might be in some trouble here, but can he find the kill is the question. Well, now with Lasber here, changes the story of that fight. Looks like a 1v1 for Sot. Lasbra helps hand a kill over to his mid laner. Create a little oh, bit of balance. Vote. In fact, even go for the Primal Fury here for the Dragons. Unfortunately for Vote, it means that his team is nowhere to be found. Panatom gets a kill there. Jake. Over the wall, wants to go for a steal, unable to find it. Dragons get the pyro, lose their carry. And unfortunately for Vote, one and four on this Ishtar. Yeah. A lot of presence put over towards the duo lane. Was able to run away from Netroy, but Net wasn't chasing very hard because he said, hey, Tom's got it. That Susana will be able to chase him down, no problem. And now it's a tier two attempt from the Oni Warriors. They don't have much vision, but they know that no one's nearby for now, and the teleport too little too late. Nika's not going to be able to show up to this one. Tower drops, and Mike... Taking some damage, but no chase down potential from Pagon. He's just trying to get some prophetic stacks. Yeah, just trying to stay alive. Look, one and four hovering actually relatively high on the player damage charts, but I think you'll take the 0, 3, and 7 any day when you're top of the charts here for Pagon. Diving in, getting things done. Might be doing it again here. Stun from Jake onto Dardes. Never mind, Trelly. They're going to play it patiently. Something... Admittedly, I, I They're gonna find what? hard to expect. I think those words are foreign to the Warriors. I, I don't even know. When I'm casting the Warriors, I don't know what that <laughs> word means. Giant. See, told you, man. What are you, what are you talking about, patient? <laughs> There's a fire giant to do, and you think the Oni Warriors aren't simply going to do it with two members of their team while the rest of the team zones? Pagon and Jake are still looking to fight, by the way, in mid. They're just linked up like, hey, any action over here? Oh, you guys are doing that thing pre-17 minutes? Sure, we can go ahead and grab the FG if you want, but... Yeah, patient, not in their vocabulary. Awesome Jake has just been leading the charge wherever his team follows. And in this case, Sot is by himself just stealing away camps. He's full damage, by the way. Not very tanky, 
does not have the hammer. Does Nika have an ultimate? Nope, can't chase it down. So Thor will be just fine. But Dardas still doesn't have beads. Remember, Sa was able to ultimate that red buff. It looks like Dardas still could be a target for Anvil of Dawn if he was anywhere near the Warriors, but he's actually as far away from them as you can be. He's over at the opposite Tier 2 tower. Well, two Tier 2s right now being aggressed on by the Warriors. Only a single one not even touched yet. There, the Dragons finally step in left side Tier 2. The Warriors aggressing into the Phoenix on the right-hand side. Need a little help. Panaton, Pagon rotating from mid. River's Rebuke thrown up by PBM. Locks in Netroid. But a dying, an undying love specifically keeps Netroid going. Jake stunned out and then mezzed only slightly. Phoenix defended. Charlie, the split push doesn't work out for the Dragons either. Tier 2 in the left still standing for the Warriors. 3,000 gold swing and they might be able to do something with that. No, the wall disappears just before they can get the damage on foot. Yep, they got plenty of damage. The only Warriors decide not to step forward. Likely because their entire gold lead is sitting in their pockets as we speak. They have plenty of gold to spend, <laughs> and they have not went back to spend said gold. So their their item builds are looking relatively even until that gold is spent. And Oni, the Oni Fury, that is, is spawning in here shortly. Something that they definitely want to grab and will help out with their siege. All the tier twos are gone, but the Phoenix is not going to be easy to grab, especially this early on. Awesome Jake needs to get a bit tankier. And with another Breastplate of Regrowth finished up, that is going to help out. This Aphrodite already has been a menace. And the Lono's upgrade on top of the regrowth. Yeah, I'm thinking the Hachi Afro duo combined for 6 and 2. Still not looking as good as Panatom on the 6 and 1 for Susano, but they've still been essentially just running around trying to find relics, right? Awesome, Jake. I don't think. We can talk about the patience thing. Jake's been walking up looking for stuns, looking for damage, even if he doesn't have follow-up. Even if his team's not with him, he's like, yeah. I'm going in, man. Like, even if my lovebirds don't do much damage, I'm trying to get active. I mean, you got three blinks on the dragons. One of those being in mid. Something we've actually had a conversation oh about. How gosh. it doesn't work out. I mean, think about it. Beads Aegis there? Uh, at least maybe you survive a little longer. Not much you can do against the full Thor kit. Darda has gone for another 30. I mean, he had beads. He just didn't use them. Sometimes you just get locked down, man. I mean, either A, he thought he didn't need to, or B, he thought he was dead regardless. Yeah. And I'm thinking it was probably the latter, probably considering B. how much those Hydra's <laughs> procs were doing. But he definitely could have beads and crushing waved out. Oh my goodness, saw it. Unfortunate. He can do no wrong. Lazbra's going to go in. I don't think he even touched Pagon. Yeah, Pagon seems to be healthier, actually. And Lazbra, unfortunately, is <laughs> gone <laughs> for his trouble. Good kill by the Warriors. And they're going to keep it going. River's Rebuke. And that's going to lock out Sot because of the hammer teleport, but it doesn't lock out Panatom. And that's two kills, all in the blink of an eye for the Warriors. Easily done. Mika, vote Dardes. Left to defend. Left side Phoenix goes down, and that's going to be the go button for the Warriors. They dunk in. They find another, and they just keep them coming, Trelly. All five gone on the Dragons. The Deicide, a 2-0, and smite history here for the Warriors with a 13 undefeated streak and a perfect phase. I mean, what an absolute way to end that game. You, you So much on the line here. They're absolutely popping off, showing no signs of slowing down. Sot's going for solo ults whenever he can find them. Uh, Pagon's jumping in consistently. The, the KD doesn't look that solid, yeah. but the damage numbers were there. And the Oni Warriors, again, no one is playing Smite like them. And it's for good reason. It's hard to do. And we've seen, I mean, teams try to pick up the pace. Ravens, I think, do a pretty good job of that yesterday versus the Ferryman. Uh, we see the Dragons try to pick up the pace this time around, but the Warriors were more than happy to meet them. It just feels like it's so difficult. I mean, when you're making calls for 7-minute Gold Furies, 16-minute yep. Fire Giants, yep. it, it, you can't beat their play on map right now. And unfortunately, no one's been able to find the answer to that. Usually yeah. it's, let's hope they troll or in picks and bands. <laughs> let, let, let's hope they troll in picks and bands, and then maybe we can find an opening. But even when their comps aren't top of the meta, they're playing them pristinely. Well, so far, I mean, look, undefeated in yep. a phase, undefeated since their formation. The Warriors are looking great. And Trelly, unfortunately for everyone, that's the last time we get to see him until Masters. It's going to be a little while before the Warriors return, but they get to end this one on a nice 2-0 over the Dragons. That does it for myself and Trelly. We'll throw it back to the desk to break it down. Something fitting about all, all of this, the way the numbers work out, the way the history works out, it's the last set of the phase for the Oni Warriors. It is the record-setting match for the Oni Warriors. It, just the way all the numbers kind of come together, it's a perfect 10-0 phase. It's a 3-0 kickoff tournament. And Miff, it's a 13-set win streak 
for the Oni Warriors, a roster that has never known defeat outside of an individual game, maybe a few times throughout the phase. It's also one of the top five fastest games we've had so far this year as well. A very dominant performance from the Oni Warriors who control PvP, they control Macro Farm, they control Objectives. I, I both love and hate the Oni Warriors, Dave. Uh, I love them because they're playing Smite better than anybody else and it's their own unique brand, it's fast, it's high octane, and it's engaging to watch. Hate them because there's not much I could say about it, right? There, there's really not much that needs to be broken down. They won their lane matchups, used the lead they got from their lane matchups to get objectives, and then won team fights because they were five, six, seven thousand gold up by the time a team fight eventually did happen. Yep. Every concern I had for this Oni Warriors draft going into game two just w was unfounded. It just didn't have an opportunity to even rear its head because they execute so well in play on field. It, you know, we, we've, we've said it a lot. We've waxed poetic trying to figure out how teams are going <laughs> to theorize how to beat this squad. Is it compositions? Is, is it maybe if you show up at the Gold Fury and put the Konami code in and at, at the seven-minute mark, Panatomo, DC. <laughs> I think that's got to be it. you you got to be able to push buttons as well as them. And a, as of right now, nobody can. One of the most ridiculously talented teams we've ever been able to see. Now set smite history with 13 sets in a row. And remember, one of them was a – was a, or maybe a couple of them were best of fives. I'm trying to remember the semifinals of kickoffs were best of fives or not. But finals certainly was a best of five uh, where they 3-0'd this very same Jade Dragon team. And I remember I asked the Dragons and the Oni Warriors during that draft event right after kickoff, well, you know, like maybe a little rivalry starting to build up here. The Dragons may say yes. The only warriors might say, who? who? <laughs> right. <laughs> We're so toxic together, Myth. It's no, so dude. wonderful. Uh, at, at this point, it feels like everyone's a rival of the only warriors. Is that the only warriors really realizing that they've got people uh, who are up against them? The only warriors, 13 sets in a row. SOT has been playing some fun picks, some standard picks, just about everything throughout their 10 set regular season win streak and their 13 set competitive win streak. And he's standing by with Gore Miser for the post game. That's right, and honestly, we'll just start with the big one, right? 13 sets in a row since you guys have formed all wins. Undefeated at this point. A couple of games every now and then when, uh, I guess, we ask your teammates. A little trolling, right? How's it feel, undefeated? Um, I mean, it feels absolutely amazing. I mean, it's, I mean, it's probably one of the best feelings. I mean, um, I've never been... Uh, you know, I, I've never had a win streak this long, so I yeah. mean, it's it's a crazy feeling. That's longest in Smite for a team to, to yeah. hit 13, so crazy. absolutely insane yeah. for you guys. You're going forward at this point. You know, you, you've been able to topple everybody. You're playing Smite faster. What is it? Uh, you know, we we try to find the secret. What is the secret of the Warrior success? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, <laughs> I've been trying to I've been trying to find the secret as well. I don't even know. I mean, <laughs> you don't even. Know. <laughs> I think it's just a combination of. Uh, well, I mean, I think luck. I mean. Luck is obviously pretty important. We've had mm -hmm. a lot of l lucky steals, a lot of lucky games. I think also like hard work because we, yeah. we put in a ton of work. Um, we do troll sometimes, but you know we we still <laughs> at the end of the day we still like want to win. Yeah. Um, you know like we don't really have that much veteranship, so like I think I'm a, I I play longest of anyone on my team. So it's like I mean uh, we're all like pretty we're all still pretty hungry. I think we all also have like pretty good like like just nat natural synergy with each other. Like we yeah. kind of uh, you know we kind of know how each other plays. I think we're also all on the same page. So like. Maybe sometimes some teams have players that want to farm. Yeah. Sometimes teams have players that want to play a super hard early game. Um, but I think we are pretty good at like we're, we're generally decent at everything, so we have good flexibility. But yeah. I think we're all like like in our nature good at like running it down. So. And I think that's kind of what we've gotten the gist of is like most of the time I think in, in Jake's words you'd be like, I know a stun's gonna happen there because I would stun there. And yeah. so you just you're <laughs> yeah. just uh, uh, immediately uh, able to kind of play like your Jake own play. Thing. That sounds like something Jake would say. <laughs> and so you guys go well. I do have to ask you I guess about that set at least a little bit. First game you go nine and zero, absolutely insane on the Guan Yu. Second game you're running the field on the Thor. Did you the triple kills? I gotta go in on those. Did you expect those to happen during those fire giant fights? It feels like otherwise the dragons are, would be ahead. Yeah, I mean definitely not. I definitely did not expect it. But um, I did buy glad shield. Usually I forego the glad shield in place of uh, the lotus sickle because mm -hmm. it's better for your team. But I was kind of playing a bit more selfish and <laughs> hey, it worked out. Yeah. Also, I think I, I maxed my two instead of my one. Yeah. Um, just because I wanted to do more damage. Um, so. I mean, I kind of expected to get a few kills, but I also got Slender as well for like the Solanas and just to get more kills. But I didn't expect to get triple kill after triple kill, then a double kill. 
Um, but I mean, I'll take it. I'm not complaining. Yeah, dude, nine and zero. You got a blood forge by the end yeah. of it. You were absolutely feeling good in that one. And it's a two zero victory for the Warriors here. Congratulations on that. Congratulations on the win streak. And unfortunately for everyone at home, we're not going to see you till Masters. Yeah. So good yeah. luck in, and the, also, in the practice. Can I give, can I give uh, just a few shout outs? Yeah, go for it. So I want to give a few shout outs to the most special group of people. Number one, the sock drawer. I mean, I got I mean, to shout you guys out. I love you guys. Second, the Jake writers. All right. Thank you. You know, if you guys are, your support's crazy. And third of all, the Peggers. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Thank you so much. There you go. Shout outs to everyone out there. And of course, that's it for myself and Sock. We'll go back to the desk to close this one out. Thank you. A team that wouldn't be who they are without all of the support they've got behind them. Which one of those do you want to be a part of? I can't of? say it, man. You know I can't say any of those. I'm saying any of that. A Hindu man's going to be waiting in the wings just. I, uh, I, I dare Mifflin to say one of those. <laughs> one, two, or three. Which one do you want to be a part Three. <laughs> Uh, that was one of three SPL sets that we've got for you today. The Oni Warriors, they make history and win their 13th set in a row with a 2-0 over the Jade Dragons. Now, we move into the order side of things, and a very important match in the order side of things because the Camelot Kings and the Eldritch Hounds going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, uh, and our day will end with Leviathans versus Gladiators, two teams, honestly, not... Too different of a spot of the Jade Dragons trying to get things put together before Masters, before playoffs over in the Chaos side. We'll have three matches for you tomorrow. Keep your eyes on the final one on Sunday. That's the Kings versus the Ravens. Why is that important? Because if the Kings win their next set, they'll also be 6-3. and three. I'm trying to be 6-4 and four or 5-4. and four. I actually think Kings versus Ravens may come down to that final match anyway because the Kings won the first set. So if they win tomorrow, they'd have the 2-0 head-to-head over the uh, the Highland Ravens. The Ravens would drop to 6-4. and four. I'm just doing math on the fly. At any rate, you need to keep your eyes on Kings versus Ravens for first seed in the order division tomorrow. Now, don't count out the Hounds. They're on a bit of a roll here themselves. They're at 4-4. Four and four. They've got two sets left to play and could make some waves with a, uh, a win over the Camelot Kings in our next set. Myth, before we move into our next set, you and I are going to cast this one together. Kings versus Hounds, a more intriguing matchup now than it might have seemed a few weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, at the beginning of the phase, even, the Camelot Kings, I thought they were going to have a similar trajectory to the Oni Warriors. Uh, I thought it was going to be the tale of top one in either side. Just so much parody in the order column, the Hounds on such a streak. I feel like there could be a good deal of intrigue in this next set. But, Dave, before we go to anything else, i got to ask you a question. One, two, or three. Here's the good news. I control things here. You don't want to and be a I don't coward. have to answer the question. Camelot so Kings scared. versus Eldritch Hounds. Dave and Miff on the cast. We'll continue this conversation. Don't you worry. Kings versus Hounds coming up next. Coward.